work out of it. We leave. Now. That's more of money stuff. I heard Christ. You can probably turn the REM pod on it. What is it? You can probably turn on the REM pod on that. Flip it to the back. The tab, flip it open. Down here. Yep. Christ. Just like a split second right here when no one was over by Pride Rock over there. Mm -hmm. Just for a split second. We had that um, when I first got the camera. But like it was close up. Just like that. Yep. Three again. Three again. Number three. Three seven. seven. I got seven. As soon as you said that, I got seven. So you said seven, I got seven. Three seven. She also got seven thousand. Yeah, I got that back there. Also on this There's corner, right this corner over here, like past her, it's just like up close too. I think it's right here. Keeps flipping for a sec. Could be because I'm not like steady. You're steadier than most right now. You wouldn't believe half the videos I get out of that thing. Wee! You hand it to a five-year-old. <laughs> I like that it makes these windows green. Oh, it does it? Yeah. Oh, nice. The windows are green up well, there. I have it on the night vision setting. Yeah. But still, it's funny. So everything's gonna look green. Get a shot of the moon. Now I have to move? No, just move it. Just tilt it towards you. That's a cool shot. Strong. Strong? Pharmacy again. Harry Styles. <laughs> the name or a song? What? The name or a song? 
No, it's just Harry Styles. Someone said Harry Styles. All right. He's got a good song like oh. <laughs> 4.3 4.2 You're a ghost now. So, I mean, I'm going to give you this one and I'm going to take that one. So, last thing was the Taylor one. I got Taylor. We got pharmacist again. It's relevant, but he heard Harry Styles. I'm being so for real. I'm just telling him what you heard. Everybody tells me that they heard Harry Styles, and I, and I make a joke. I have to. Like, I don't give a shit that you heard Harry Styles. Uh, uh, I want to know just why. Just I heard pick up on it. It's like, like, like the name it. Harry Styles. Like someone, someone said Harry Styles. No, I haven't Styles. heard the name. No, I heard songs. I don't give, like Harry. That's it. I would have told you I, I heard him say watermelon you were, sugar. You don't know when to stop making jokes. No, I would have told you if it was music for a sushi restaurant or not. Does it normally on here, like at the top, towards someone said, give an extra line, going somewhere else? If there's another point of reference of depth. So okay. Yes. Just making sure because it's done that to you a few times. Yeah. That and it's not picking up like some people. Well, again, this is a pretty dark space. Yeah. I've noticed like once we get into like a little bit lighter spaces, it's a little bit more clear. Like it's making her do an Irish jig. It's because it's looking for all the points on her, even though she's standing still and you're standing still. Seven three eight zero. Again. I wrote down the first one. I, yeah, they just told oh, me it's seven three eight zero. And none of those numbers mean anything to me. Yeah. No. I found a car. Yeah. Just be careful on how you hold it. No, I'm a, a I'm a sticky iPad kid. I'm good. You All play right. games over there? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I normally hand that to the kids in the group. All right. So anything else? Really good, much else. No, was... Any numbers show up on your other device? Yeah, I've seen well, you stop a few times. Yeah, when I was over there, because you know it, it was it was really low, and I got up to like a 0. 0.6, 0. 0.8, but still not anything. still nothing relevant. I actually got a 1.5 now, but it, it still isn't that high. But no, not at all. Well, 2.8, so 5.6, oh, okay. 2.5, Lord, 2.7, 3.3. Oh yeah, he keeps getting like Bible Belt together. stuff. No, it's not that sensitive. It's got to be right on top of it for it to be able to take. So normally when 9. I 5. keep escalating it, I don't want to know anything below the 9.5 because that's the highest one you've given me. It's jumping all over now. What mm, dead. No, when he was that's just in dead. frame, it was giving him a second body. It might be the sensitivity of it. That's gotcha. Gotcha. Unless it's doing something completely opposite of him, 
that would be the only thing I would look at as maybe being something. Gotcha. If it's like doing the same arm leg motions, I'm like, yeah, it's just a little too sensitive for that lighting. So, well, I should like, answers, and then we're going to speed you guys up for the next spot. Okay. This so, one's like beatboxing. Rich, come on over. This is picture pages time. You got to see uh, the visuals. Smoke. It was a 4.0 and I heard smoke. Oh, look at that. It was four because it was, it's been, it's, it hasn't been fluctuated that much. But. Yeah, to see how the whole thing would right. play out. And, yeah, and the main important. part of that is because, I mean, let's face it, I mean, I'm over 40. I need a bathroom every two hours. Right. So I'm always racing. I'm glad I'm with you then. Because yeah. <laughs> that's the same way. <laughs> we always yeah. go to the restroom as soon as we get down here. we got to race to see who's got one open. Um, yeah. And we don't, you know, we like to not interrupt the business. So we'll go to a sure. parking garage and see if theirs is open. If not, we'll go to the candy shop because we know that. Right, right. Big John's, like, she's like, I don't want to go in the bar. Come on, you're with me. <laughs> it's our last resort. Well, I can imagine she doesn't want to go to the bar. Like, I mean, that's weird, you know, but. Well, it's just not the thing. But you're your only choice, though. We got to go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, so, anyway, there's a reason why we're here, of course. Uh, but I know I said this is a popular ghost tour stop, and we're the only ones here. Um, I don't time this, like I said, so we just have to be here. We know other tours are passing by. Good time. Um, even if somebody's going to be passing by, we just kind of split the seas. London's already video recording down the alley, so nobody suspects her actually filming them. She, she knows exactly what she's doing right now. She's a pro. Um, yeah. First time using this device. Figured it out. There you go. <laughs> this is my first time using it. How many iPads have you bought for? iPods. I know. Uh -huh. Not this up, though. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> So, this is Philadelphia Alley. This place used to be called Dueler's Alley. So again, we're just here to stir shit up. If you guys hear things, by all means, just kind of spit them out. Um, I'll keep going. If it's not relevant, I'll stop if it is. So, we all tell the same story down here. But again, this is not a normal ghost tour. This is um, any of the details. So, let's get into it. There's a doctor that comes down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Lad. We commonly get the song Brown Eyed Girl down here, just so you know. Um, so again, it's relevant because it's part of his name. So he moves down here because he's supposed to get married to his fiancee, Amanda. Amanda just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. And she has an attorney helping her out with all of the cash. So the attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after Amanda's money. He tells Amanda to get rid of the doctor. So Dr. Ladd moves down here to Charleston to prove that he's not after her money. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. So it wasn't a really good start to his coming to Charleston. There was somebody walking by with the name Ralph Isaacs. I'm going to stop there because it's exactly why we have that Ouija board device. We were getting the initials RI all the time, but I want you to also keep in mind that Ralph Isaacs' initials are the same as where the doctor came from, Rhode Island. So RI it relates to two different characters, but we were getting it on the red spirit boxes all the time from a DJ. Don't know why. Only while we were down here, so I was like, let's get the Ouija board and see if we can get the same initials. And we've had it a handful of times in the past few months that I've had that device. So, back to Ralph. He tells the doctor, dude, you don't want to stay here. I know this guy. He's going to try to kill you. Just come with me to 59 Church Street. You can rent a space, and you'll be safe and good to go. So, the doctor took him up on the offer. They became friends. Now, the longer the doctor stays down here, the more money he's making. He's proving his point that he's not after Amanda's money. So, Amanda gets wind of this, and she's moving down soon. So that way, they can get married. Dr. Lag heard about this, and he becomes known as the Whistling Doctor. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Every haunted city you're ever going to visit has a cliched whistling ghost. We all have one, just so you know. There is actual proof of this one from my investigations. We're going to get to that in just a minute. However, let's go back to Ralph and the Doctor. They go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other because the Doctor makes more money. That's the way the hierarchy is here in Charleston. So he gets better seats. They mm -hmm. talk about the plays on the way home. They go see Richard III, and they're arguing over the new actress as they're walking home. Dr. Ladd thought the new actress was great. Ralph didn't. The argument turns into Ralph insulting the doctor's fiance, Amanda, back home in Rhode Island. It got that crazy, huh? Oh, yeah. It escalated. <laughs> I know. I escalated real quick, just so we can get through it. Um, but they obviously go their separate ways, pretty pissed off at each other. Now, I told you Ralph knows people around town. He actually goes to his friend with the newspaper. And he tells them he wants to put an ad in the paper telling what he thinks of the doctor. Kind of a year of disgrace to society. Um, we will let this group pass through as well. Yeah. Um, okay. No, you're good. You're going to stay good. Over here in listening distance. Yeah, as long as we're good. Like, that's why it's probably why they're coming back up. Um, so anyway, Dr. Ladd saw this ad that the, you know Ralph posted in there, and he rebuttals with, dude, let's just go to Dueler's Alley. We're going to settle this shit. Somebody's going to die. So they came down, they took their 10 paces, they turned, the doctor pointed his gun in the air. Looks like he's going to stop the first season. Um, so he pointed his gun in the air, and he shot. He didn't want it. 
wanted to have the courage and bravery to show up to the fight. So, but Ralph, as he's one boy, he puts it in the kneecap on the doctor. So he didn't die either. But Ralph proved his point that he's pissed off. Dr. Ladd fell to the ground. His friends picked him up and carried him home to 59 Church Street, where he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. It's 1786. Bullet shot wounds were a lot different back then. He probably tried to bleed it out himself because it was lead poisoning at that point. So, as we tour, he tells their guest, listen for the whistles. Cool thing for you, we have my voice recorder running, and we also have a video camera running. You don't need to listen to it right now. You're obviously listening to something else. So, we will get the word whistle down here quite often. We've even had whistling from songs. Think of Guns N' Roses' Patience, think of moves like Jagger. Like, there's just whistling parts of those songs. It's not coincidence that we're getting them down here all the time. So, including the word whistle. I haven't even checked my word list yet since we got in here. I have no idea what's coming up. Um, but, there's a couple of things about the whistles. If you're going to try this on your own while you're in town and walk all the way through the alley, I can't take you to the end because I've been booted out of here. She was with me and there to validate. We're going to talk about that in just a minute because that's the fun part of the story. But, keep in mind every local knows this story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland Street, or Cumberland Street this way or Queen Street, throws a whistle down the alley. We all do it. So we do it every night. Well, probably not for long because our garage isn't going to be past the alley anymore. Yeah. Uh, but we still throw a whistle down here. Let's talk about why I got kicked out of here. That's the fun part. Sorry, I was just making sure the neighbor yeah. was on <laughs> um, So the alley didn't go all the way through that way. Right about where that tour is standing, there was a wall. The reason uh -huh. why is because this is where they kept all the livestock. So this was called Cow Alley before it was called Dueler's Alley. We do get the word cow down here a lot. Um, I know it seems like a weird word to get on a word generator, but it happens all the time. So that means the bricks on that side are older than these bricks that we're standing on right here. Those are sun dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint from a slave child down there at the end, along with some fingerprint swipes. So everybody wants to stop and try to get a reading out of that brick. I treat that brick the same way I do a grave. That kid's not staring at that brick in the afterlife. It's the last place you're gonna find it, to be quite honest. So November 26th of 2020, my entire team of 10 is huddled around one brick, waiting for something to happen. I'm trying to shoot them along, obvious reasons, but it's also outside the kitchen window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. I was just trying to be respectful, not knowing I was actually out of bounds. I'm not allowed to take people out that far. So, oh, you, oh, you can't? Oh, you can't. It's residential. So we have our lawns. I was new at this. So I was like, all right, shit. So the new owner came out. He was screaming. She's laughing because dad's getting yelled at. And, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I worked in, a, in retail management for over 20 years. I don't do Thanksgiving anymore. And mainly, most of those years were with Walmart. Yeah. Oh my pain. Oh yeah. So, um, again, the next day, November 28th, I talked to my partner at the time. I told him what happened. He's like, dude, you can't take people down that far. You gotta go down halfway or reroute your group. I had a full group that night. I'm like, well, shit, what stories am I gonna tell? You know, so I quickly researched and I told my team, I don't believe in the next story we're, we're gonna talk about because I've never had anything happen there. And I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person. So they all kind of chuckled, but then somebody heard the name Anne on Spirit Box. I didn't tell them who threw them to that story. Anne Bonnie, the famous female pirate. So we get up there, I told it a little bit, I was able to research that day, and somebody else heard the number 300. I don't know what that means in real time, I write it down. Research the next day, we were there November 28th, 2020. And Bonnie's trial for piracy, November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary yeah, of the pirate yeah. That's So, cool. well, shit, now I gotta learn about pirates. Right, so right. everything we're gonna be dealing with, because pirates mean are lore. So, as somebody with a master's degree in creative writing, I know how to piece it all together and look for the facts. So, we are going to be discussing Anne Bonnie and looking for her at the next phase, which will be over from, you know, Dr. Ladd. However, everything we're going to discuss at the next phase came from a minimum of two resources. Again, I wanted to make this as factual as possible um, to make sure when I'm talking about this person every single night that I know what I'm talking about. Not to mention we're getting legitimate evidence. Um, so, let me take a look at my word list real quick just to see what we have going on. Last thing was competition, but we were still this location lately and our last stop only because that is close to the address. Yeah. So, and it's not that we're getting things about the doctor near that spot, we're getting things about the house. It's very interesting. Over 500. So there's a number that shows up commonly down here too. So you guys haven't given it to me yet, but obviously you guys may I just put my thing in. I was, I was listening to you and for, kind of forgot to put yeah. it back in. So it's, it's difficult to listen to me. So that's why I let people like give you guys a few minutes, especially when this is all we're working with tonight and the focus is the spirit boxes. I want to make sure you guys are getting the gist of the, the listening skill. Again, for 
good for now. Play some all together. What are you saying? They'll just randomly have one without people and one people. Say that again, I'm sorry. They'll so we'll just have the first video just have anyone in reality, like actual people, like live people. Right. Um, and then well, this alley like can be difficult because if somebody's moving around a lot, they get a lot of the tree branches, and there's a lot of obviously brush down here. Yeah. So can be difficult to watch this part unless it's completely still. I'm trying oh, to down here. Spot. Yeah, so with her camera, because it's being a depth perception, so if there's like that little tree branch in front of the lamppost, mm -hmm. it'll push. Sometimes it will try to pick up, it'll pick like it up. look like arms. Oh, it will. Like yeah. It will pick it up. Like, there's no doubt. So what I do it's is, doing it right now. if it's I too dark, I light, like I take a screenshot and lighten it to make sure it's not a tree branch, a post, and I'm looking for head, shoulders, moving arms and legs. You know, you're talking earlier, way down past where he is, but it looked like somebody was moving across there. It was weird. I was like staring, and I can't see very well, so I'm like, we I just didn't say anything. Like, some rats down. Oh, it, it probably was a rat then. Right. Yeah, I'm like, I thought maybe a frog, but no, so yeah, that's, we get, that's they're, they're pretty much. Yeah. They're probably just being rats. <laughs> they're probably the cat sized rats. Yeah. All right, you guys got anything going on? Anything you're hearing? I got mm -hmm. therapy real clear, but. Okay. Therapy? You need therapy? Sometimes. Yeah, I'm, not get, I'm getting stuff, but nothing that really. He's a picture taker. It doesn't get any better than a full moon. Yeah, full moon. Yeah. So, um, this building is the reason why we're here. So, the building is this is the gunpowder magazine. So, it's a museum now. So, um, so for your friends that are coming in that aren't in this particular investigation piece, like, this is a great architectural piece to look at when you're here. And it's a cheap museum. It's like five bucks a head. Um, so, but anyway. That's not bad. Yeah. Well, it's a very short tour. To like learn about the history of it. So here's the gist of why we're here. Those are not crosses, by the way. Those are earthquake bolts. Um, you said you're a contractor. I'm not sure if you're familiar with what those are. Um, but earthquake bolts, they're all over the city. Yeah. And obviously, they're oh, turnbuckles. Yeah, right. turnbuckles. Yeah. So the reason why they're there is you know, because if we have another earthquake, which we haven't, we can tighten them up and it's supposed to stop it from incurring any further damage. Mm -hmm. That's. But those earthquake bolts are part of the reason why we're here, these specifically, because this is the first set that Charleston ever put in because this is the oldest government building in South Carolina. It was finished in 1713. So again, it held gunpowder for seven different wars. Um, so, and by the way, the, the uh, number that you heard earlier, 3.7 or 7.3, Lauren, like that's actually part of the doctor's birthday. So his birthday was July 7th. So 7-7, seven, seven, uh, we usually get double sevens yeah. like, while we're there. But anyway, back to this particular building. This building was being constructed at the same time that Anne Bonnie was coming here to Charleston to start a new life. So right in the middle of the construction, which took 10 years, which does that sound like our government small building 10 yeah, years? Yeah, imagine so like, that. Yeah. <laughs> so 1708 is where the story begins. Try to follow me. There's a lot of history, but we will be able to spread out and again, get used to the speeds that you're on. So the young lady moves here from Ireland. Her name is Anne Cormack. She comes here with her father and his mistress. The mistress is Anne's mother. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of twists here. Um, the three of them are running away from her father's angry wife. How pissed off was she that they had to leave the country by boat to come here? Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's yeah. a mess, man. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a whole another scandal, like another 30-minute story. Because yeah. I've researched it too. But anyway, back to Anne. Um, so they land in Georgetown, which is just north of here, about about an hour, hour and a half. Dad bought a plantation. Mom died pretty quickly. That means he's sending young Anne down here to sell anything from the plantation to keep things afloat. So, hence the familiar building. Anne is said to be seen all over town. Hopefully, with the amount of communication that we have, we're going to get a good hit tonight. Um, the EMF readings, we'll talk about those at the end of the piece of the history. But, uh, again, hit or miss. We're either going to have a lot going on or absolutely nothing or maybe just stuff from Dr. Ladd. Um, but let's go backwards to Ireland for just a second. Anne was said to be a badass even back then. When she was seven, eight, nine years old, they say she killed a servant with a knife to the belly. So again, knife, servant, and belly have all shown up here from different spirit boxes as a full sentence in one evening. So we'll kind of take that with what it is. Let's fast forward. The building's done in 13. By 1715, pirates are coming through town. Anne is stoked. Why? She's gonna fall in love. So that way she can earn her freedom, just like a man. Again, it's, it's 1700s. It's, it's a man's world. Um, first guy she falls in love with is James Bonney. And yes, I said first because there's a handful and we're going to go through them, which is part of her story. Um, so James Bonney, you can already see where this one's going because we have already mentioned Anne's pirate name. Dad didn't approve. They ran away to Jamaica. They got married. Anne Cormac became Anne Bonney. 
when they got that crew. Right. Somebody's yeah. going to figure it out. Yeah. He drops her off in Cuba. Go have the baby. Come back later. We'll figure it out. Yeah, Comes. we'll pick you up later. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much exactly what happened. Yeah. So he drops her off. She has the baby, but returns with no baby. We have no idea what happened to the child. No amount of my research can figure it out. Mm -hmm. But she comes back dressed as a female. This makes Jack pretty angry, so he's pretty pissed off. And while she was away giving birth, he captured another pirate crew. They're down below deck. She's going to go flirting with that pirate crew to make him even more mad. That's who Anne is. We're on guy number three. Guy number three turns out to be a female, dressed like a guy to be part of the pirate crew the Calico Jack captured. So now we have two females dressed like males on the same ship. This is Mary Reed. She went by Mark Reed to become a pirate. Her and Mary became friends, possibly lovers. We're not going to really know. But the British find out where they are. They send an entire fleet of ships to take them down. Rumor is, is that Anne and Mary were the only two pirates not drunk enough to come up and fight with one bullet flintlocks. That's obviously not going to work out well. Yeah. Um, so obviously they get arrested. And as they're being arrested, um, she looks at her captain and beau, Jack, and says, I'm sorry to see you here, but if you would have fought like a man, you wouldn't have to be hanged like a dog. The word dog is very prominent here. Just so you know. Um, so the judge wants to see the two men that fought back on their own. Jack and the drunk crew are already dead and gone. The two ladies go in front, reveal their gender, hoping to save themselves. He doesn't give a shit that they're female. They're still pirates, they said that. Um, we plead our bellies was the last thing they screamed out because you can't hang a pregnant woman in 1720. It's illegal. So he sends them both back to jail, delays the hanging. Dad is up here in South Carolina with his Irish money. Bails her out, brings her home. She remarries. And husband number two, guy number four. We're going to count Mary. We don't really know. She has four kids, dies at the age of 84. Yes, very abrupt. I mean, that's an old age, though, man. Yeah. And, and back then, 84, that's yeah, a long life. Yeah, really. Man. Well, we talked about Eliza Pinkman, who was 70 years old yeah. and died in 1793. So yeah. that was nine years later. I mean, those are some long lives for that far back. That's, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Mary Reed dies a year later in whatever pirates died from from the Jamaican jail. So use your imagination. Most books will tell you that it was fever. I call bullshit on that one. It was probably scurvy. Why the hell not? It's romantic from pirates. Um, so a few questions I can give you. Again, normally by this time, my teams of 10 know how to ask questions. I'm just assuming you guys do. But just to get you started, things I left out on purpose. The names of Anne's parents. I do that purposely so you have something to work with. I also left out the name of Calico Jack's ship. I left out the city where Anne came from in Ireland. That comes up from time to time. Um, I also left out the color of Anne Bonnie's hair, which I'm sure you can guess as an Irish woman, was red. So um, that's a simple one, but we get it all the time. So that might be something for you to easily grab that's coming through on your faster spear boxes at this point. Um, EMF detection, I don't get excited on this front half for EMF readings because the two electrical poles and the parking meters on the other side. So if you're going to venture off like towards the back and you get a reading back there, I'm excited. Also keep in mind, there's about 15 different pieces of history on this corner alone of where I get haunting stories from. That's why I always say, tell me exactly what you're hearing. It could be relevant to not the pirates, not the doctor, but it could be relevant to something else that I already know about. So again, we're going to venture off like what we did. I'm sure Ryland and London are going to stand right here so they can actually get some footage. And just keep in mind, that, yeah, walk around, get some, uh, just keep it away from the other tours. They're going to stop, they're going to talk, and just let them do their thing. Take pictures with an acting weird. What? The stick figures have been acting weird. How so? Well, we are also here a lot of times in the brain. So we will get things from time to time. We'll also see things in the day. Um, having a bunch of Z's. Z, H, yeah. That's a pretty specific letter. Oh, so I think. Yeah, it's just weird. This one, like, why don't we see this? Dad. El Padre. Can you tell me that this is just a bush or a shadow? That is picking up your shadow. Alright, cool. Thank you.
have it two centimeters. I, I moved it up a little bit. Rich, you got anything? I'm really relevant around this one. I'm not really getting too much. I mean, of course, I went by the rest of the bowl that it's spiked up from, but other than that, around here, not Brian too much. And pictures. other than kind of here and here, there's some things right. I could have made something. But made something out of it? Yeah, yeah. but n nothing like I thought I heard of David, but it wasn't. No, that one, that's a relevant thing. Because it was kind of. I just caught it real quick, but I was like, is that, you know. I don't know who it is. Yeah, but, but I, I. It's I, relevant because we get it every night. Yeah, but I did hear, I did hear a quick, David, and I was almost like, ah, I don't know if that's something because it wasn't clear, but I heard it. So. I don't know who it is. I've been researching David around this location. I don't know who it is. But, but I, I definitely got something like that. You keep getting the second person, like second and third person on you. On me? Mm-hmm. Sure it's not the damn bugs biting me. Dude, when I'm telling you there's three different people on you doing three different things, I know. That's what I'll be looking for. Yeah, but Mary's in the story. Um, so again, that's a whole other scandal that we can discuss for 30 minutes because there's a lot going on. Obviously, the red hair, but she came from Cork, Ireland. If you were asking that question. So we have gotten the word cork a handful of times. Um, so not a whole lot. We just started asking that question to see if we would get some different answers out of her. Um, I'd also like to show you what Calico Jack looked like and kind of explain his quick little, why everybody's so infatuated with him. So Calico Jack was named that because of the jackets that he wore. Mm -hmm. So they came from the British captains that he killed. His father was a tailor, which means textile was very important to him. Calico Jack translates to fancy jacket. That's uh, just so everybody else knows what time it is, it is 11.03, almost 11.03, so we're going to spend 12 minutes with these guys. I give them about 30 seconds to get acclimated. All of this I can't see what I'm doing to get, to get it where I need to get it. I don't know what I did. Let me turn it up a little bit. What did I do? How is that even possible? Oh, there we go. Great. I'll sit on the ground. It's going to be a minute. I got you. Yeah. <sighs> I got to record anyways. Yeah. Um, in the event another tourist has to come back up here, I'll ask you guys to get up so we can get really close to them. Okay. They don't need to see that we're blindfolded. Oh, father. Oh, father. Henry, you are getting answers. So I got two people that can get in tonight. And here's the box with the red lights.
how they're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Henry, there's nobody else in here. Oh, that's the Lord. Something about the Lord. There's nobody else in here but us, Henry. Three. Unless you've got more people with you. And if you do, please give us a number. And I'm going to continue asking questions. Busy. It's not busy out here. Are you busy right now? Are we bothering you? We know a few. It's pretty big. We know a few. It's pretty big. Bear with us. Are we bothering you, Henry? Newspaper. That's a slight There's a bicycle. Oh, Henry, why don't you tell me what just drove by? What did you see? Hazard. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us what just rode by, please. Not. Think. I know what it is. We want to know that you know what it is. Sunroof. Sunroof. Mm -hmm. See how I, I do real time type questions? My head out the sunroof. He's giving us news twice. News. Did you work for a newspaper? Intentional. We are here. That final. Very eight minutes later. <laughs> Come on, Henry. You got two minutes. Start spitting out whatever you want us to know. Three to one. Favorite tunes. obsessed with you, Henry. Your heart. I've been reading your work. You know this already. It's pretty good. Mighty God. Henry, we're 
probably down to about one minute. And again, if we could stay here until a while. One thing. And again, water. I've asked you about your wife's name. I knew. I've asked you what your job was. Any of those questions you want to answer? I didn't even ask about your son's name. That's time. Go ahead and tap your legs for me, Lauren. Welcome, welcome back. So, I guess how long did that? Let me ask once we get to that. How long did it feel like you were under? Um, it really didn't feel like that long, really. It felt like maybe five minutes or something like that. How long was it? About eleven. 11, yeah, it seemed like maybe five minutes or something, but I said I was getting a lot of stuff, but only the things I was saying was the clearest things that it's were coming like, through. I can't, I can't tell how long it was. I don't know how it's Yeah, but it felt like maybe tell. five minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. usually the reaction, because I asked that question to everybody, because everyone was like, I don't know, it didn't feel like, like, like I jumped Like I was just right. Yeah, I was surprised right. when I was getting tapped. I'm like, but yeah. we're, we're done. Like, yeah, we're done. You know. So the one thing that we got that was prominent is you gave us the word news twice. Mm -hmm. um, the gentleman that we were actually you know, trying to get in contact with actually worked for a newspaper. Um, so sense. he was a writer. Um, so in a nutshell, what you need to know about him is his name was Henry Timrod. Mm -hmm. uh, born in 1828, he went to a fight for the Civil War. His friend sent him home because he was too sick to fight. Um, he came home and his buddy calls him up to go out to his cottage to write his last words. Because um, he doesn't think he's writing, you know, writing enough. Yeah. He writes, behold her a brief mortality. Coughs on the page and a blood stain. It looks like a man writing at his desk and that's where he dies. Yeah. That book is shown one day a year on Halloween at the Charleston Library Society. It's called The Blood Book. Wow. Um, but we, I didn't touch on the on the child because I was trying to like, let's not provoke. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we've been having some bad sessions uh -huh. um, in the past. Now, provoking with asking about his son. His son died at nine months old. And that was part of the reason why he wasn't writing as much when his college friend called him out. But it, the son's name was Willie and he was born on Christmas Eve. And he was only nine months old when he passed away. So, um, it's a very quick short because I don't know a whole lot about this guy other than I'd rather read his poetry to try to get to know him and do this versus biography, biography, biography if you're getting my gist. Um, so I'd rather just read his poetry because I, you know, I understand and appreciate those things. Mm -hmm. um, but again, the word news came up. You guys had some other things that were like, I asked about like, what else do you want to tell us to it? You're going to know what was said, not yeah. to mention what's on the video. Yeah, exactly. I get, 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 I